All right, Coach, you did so much to build up this UCF basketball program. From the time you arrived, what, 1993, and just first two NCAA tournament appearances leading UCF up to the Conference USA level. I know you went through a lot during those years. Could you ever imagine back then one day you'd be standing here about to be inducted to the UCF Hall of Fame? You know, it, you don't think about those things. You know, you just think about what's right in front of you, you know, and you're going step at a time, and you're right. I, I don't know that anywhere across the country over my time here at UCF that there was so much change academically, campus-wide, and athletically at this university. The growth and the growing pains that, that we all were, were going through, no matter where you were on campus, uh, was truly incredible. I think when I got here, student population was maybe 22, 23,000, something like that. When I left, it was 58,000. I mean, that's incredible growth. And certainly changing conferences, you know, every few years. I was in three conferences in the time that I was here. So, and they've just continued. But uh, just very proud of our players, coaches. You know, I'm really standing here today on their shoulders, you know, because they're the ones that, that did it and made it happen. And but very proud of, of what we accomplished together as, as a unit. And, and uh, you look back on it you know, and um, just all of those struggles and everything, but you see where it's taken this university and this athletic department, and it's kind of neat to look back on. Coach, when did, you, when did you get know that you were going to be part of this group, and when did you get the call, and who was the one that called you? Well, Mark Daniels called me. Okay. He FaceTimed me and stuff, and, um, you know, that was when I found out. I can't remember the exact yeah. that day and stuff, but uh, special coming from Mark. You know, I think Mark is really – in, in my time in athletics, he was the best play-by-play -play guy, mm -hmm. coaches show guy that I've ever worked with. And um, he's first class in every way and, and uh, really represents this Orlando community and, and UCF in such a positive way. And so it was really neat yeah. to, to hear it from Mark. Mark uh, mentioned you in his speech last year when he got inducted. A lot of your former players vouched <clears throat> for you to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. What does it mean to have that support? A lot of fans too, like, writing articles, sending notes about you being inducted now that it's come. What do you mean by that support? Well, I didn't know that, but that's uh, that's pretty special. You know, you always want to, you know, have people talk well about yourself and, and that type of thing. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's it, it was it was a, a total team effort from the players, coaches, but fans, administrators, you know, everybody was involved in in our time here. and, and um, you know, I'm, it's nice of those guys to, to say those those words and think that I'm worthy of, of this. What were, your mo what were your emotions today coming back on campus and seeing not only how far UCF has come, but also bringing back some memories for you when you were here? Well, I, I was back last year with the honoring the 93-94 uh, team, the first Division One team to go to the tournament. So, you know, been back uh, with that and saw a lot of the players and stuff. Uh, today was uh, really a fun family day. We got all of our kids here, all of our grandkids, and uh, so they wore me out in the pool, you know, <laughs> attacking the water monster. So that's, uh, that was a heavy day for me, lifting all these kids and tossing them and doing all that, but it was fun. Coach, what would you say the biggest difference between UCF basketball when you arrived at, at campus versus the UCF basketball you left when you left? Well, I think we established ourselves as a, you know, as a solid basketball program. You know, I, they were Division I um, for 10 years before I, I took the job. And um, every one of those previous coaches, there were three previous coaches during those, those, that decade in Division I, and none of them ever coached a basketball game again. You know, and they never had a winning season in that decade. So it was trying to get over that hump and establish some some continuity in, in what, what we were trying to do and, and try to win some of those conference tournament games because at that point in time, that was really the way that you had to earn your way into the NCAA tournament. And um, that was our focus as a staff. You know, we did a lot of things early in the year that would help us and prepare us for those conference tournaments. And, you know, like in the Atlantic Sun, I think we were – seven championship games in 11 years. So it was, um, it was a struggle every step of the way, but it was fun and gratifying as well. Coach, you mentioned growth 
Um, now this is a basketball team that's in the Big 12 Conference second year. What, do you mean, what does it mean to like know that the program that you once helped build has reached this level, this division? Well, that's, that's the point of it all, you know, just what you say. And you take great pride in hopefully we laid a foundation from which this, you know, now this program can, can build on. And certainly they've done a great job. I think Donnie is, is one of the, or Johnny, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Johnny. Uh, I thought Johnny is, is, has done a tremendous job here, and he's one of the great coaches in the country and, and such a, a good man. And he's really taken our players during our tenure here, you know, and wrapped his arms around them and welcomed them back to campus and, and that type of thing. So I'm very proud of of Johnny and, and what he's done and, and the uh, and the entire you know coaching staff that's, that's coach there. you look at how the game has changed you talk about NIL and all the things that coaches have to deal with now do you think about about how much simpler maybe it was during when you were coaching and how wouldn't say it was simple <laughs> <laughs> it's totally different though yeah and uh, I retired two years ago yeah and there were a lot of things that went into my decision to retire I saw this coming, mm -hmm. and it was going to just dra dramatically change everything, and, and um, I just didn't like the, the path that it was going. And you can see it with other, you know, Tony Bennett, Tony Bennett Jay Wright. I mean, there's some high-quality individuals, high-quality coaches that um, have moved on because we all got into it back, back in the day. <laughs> but, you know, we all got into it to really help develop young men into great adults, family people, as well as trying to teach them and coach them to be the best individual player that they can be, but do it collectively with their teammates. And, you know, and, and you look back and, you know, and, and people have called me, you know, since I retired and, you know, they have kind words to say about maybe what we taught them and what we did. Not that it was easy, because mm -hmm. we were demanding, you know, and we, we held people accountable, um, and uh, that's what we got into it for—for for those relationships and to help build that type of thing, you know, on whatever campus that you're coaching on. Um, you know, now I think that that changes. You don't even know who your roster is going to be from not only year to year, might be week to week, you know, in this day and age. And uh, certainly, all the smarter people in the country than I am will figure something out and, you know, kind of balance the scales a little bit and put some guardrails on it. But right now there's no guardrails and it's, it's not good for anybody. Well, looking back on your 17 years here, what are some of your favorite memories? What kind of comes to mind when you look back on your years at UCF? Oh, there's so many, you know, great memories. The relationships that you build with, you know, your players, you know, and, and the people in the community and the fan base and the students and, you know, it's really special when the, you know, the students are yelling your name when you come out on the court and <laughs> that type of thing. And, you know, the Kirk's jerks and, you know, all their signs and all their chants and that type of thing, which, you know, bring back great memories. But it's the players, you know, and the celebrations, you know, in the locker room. And you think back to, you know, the whole chest bumping <laughs> stuff with me started when we won a big, I think, I think it was the first year or the first two years we were in Conference USA when we were playing at UTEP. And UTEP has a strong history in basketball. And it's a really tough place to play. And we came from behind and won that game at UTEP. And we come in the locker room. And I mean, those guys are chest bubbling the living daylights out of me. Well, that became the thing every time we had a big win, you know, to the detriment of me <laughs> physically, <laughs> you know, to the point where you got. Jakob Kuzmerich, who's 7'4 and 300 pounds, drilling me back into the wall and about <laughs> knocking me out. But no, those, there's just so many, you can't, you can't really think of them all at the same time. What does it mean to you to know you've left, left such a legacy? Well, it just, you know, it, it means a lot to our family because they were all, they were all in. You know, our four kids, my wife, you know, that's, you know, when you're in coaching, you're, you got to have everybody all in with you. And, it was, it was great that we could be here and really raise all four of our kids in this great community of Orlando and Oviedo in particular. But, um, you know, it, it's, it just gives you a sense of accomplishment, I guess, when you think back on it. One or two more. Coach, through all the ups and downs, there was fans who supported 
and celebrated the great wins. Do you have any message to the people who have helped you get here to, to this moment today? Well, again, I, I just appreciate all the fans and, and uh, all the support we got from everybody, you know, in the community and, and um, you know, but the student body, you know, is, is tremendous. And like I say, the Kirk's jerks were, were tremendous. <laughs> and, you know, you think back all those good times and, you know, that, that happened and all those uh, great games and, and the support, and they were a big part of our wins, you know, even in the old, you know, gym with the garage door on the end. And, <laughs> and, and it, you know, a sense of accomplishment going from what we did the first couple of days we were here to, you know, finishing off in the, in the new arena. That's, that's pretty special too. Coach, what was the, the impact of your time at UCF had on you as a coach? Well, you learn a lot of lessons. You know, there's a lot of things you feel like you did right, and there's other things that you feel like, well, maybe you could have done a bit, little bit better job on. But, you know, again, it just comes back to the relationships you had with the players. And, and, uh, and it really gives you, you know, not that, you know, any of us had that much to do with, but you look back at some of our players, and they're so accomplished, you know, and they're being so successful in their own personal lives and in their families and you know like we we had our our whole families here kids grandkids and stuff and so we went over to mike o'donnell's neighborhood and and trick-or-treated last night you know and you watch how mike and and you know his family and how his kids react and you know, it was just, it was fun, you know, doing that the other night. But you just think about those great relationships. Last one yeah, for Coach. Kevin. <clears throat> I just wanted to talk more about where you mentioned the Kurtz Jerks. Because I've been watching UCF basketball since the mid-1970s when we first started. Mm -hmm. And all during that time period, <clears throat> the best, most vocal, supportive group for the coach was the Kurtz Jerks. They yep. were really a un unique group of students that supported you. And, and us other fans were, would be watching the games, and I was saying, hey, Kurt's Jerks were awesome. And even to this day, when there's people talk saying, God, we wish we had a Kurt's Jerks type group again. So congratulations for that, because I know they appreciated you as a coach. Well, they, they were a special group, that, that group. And, and uh, you know, but the, the whole student body, you know, and I think Jimmy Skiles, you know, he was a manager for us, and then moved on to other things, but he was a grassroots guy that really got those students rolling, mm -hmm. you know, for us, and he was tremendous, and you got to give Jimmy a lot of credit for the grassroots efforts and stuff, but uh, yeah, there, that was a unique group, those Kirk's Jerks. They got their own t-shirts, they're selling them on the, you know, online and stuff. I mean, those guys are great. All right, thanks everybody. Kirk, Thanks, Kirk, guys. Kirk, 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 Kirk. You know, that 